Hey guys, it's Kevin from my review for the latest new comedy series on HBO known as Los Espookies. And what Los Espookies is essentially about is we center on this group of four friends. They are all very much into horror. They don't just view horror as a genre. It's pretty much a lifestyle to them. It's something that they just love doing. And so after getting the opportunity to scare some uh, civilians, they decide that they're going to try to make a legitimate business out of this. They start this business called Los Espookies, and it's basically channeling them, trying to coordinate these different events. Um, um, but also trying to really stay together as all of them start to veer in different directions, and that's really all I'm going to say. So Los Spookies overall, I really knew nothing going into this. I didn't even really watch a trailer or anything. I knew that Fred Armisen had a new series coming out. I knew it was going to be almost all in Spanish, and I knew that it was on HBO, and that was enough to hook me in. I was really hoping this could be something really great. I heard rave reviews, and I have to say, I had a very good time with this first season. Is this an amazing show? No, but it's still a very well done uh, first season for sure, and we're just getting to Right now starting off with the cast and that's definitely one of the best things about the show pretty much everyone in the show they're not very well-known comedians they are comedians but they're not very well-known comedians and i think that really does heighten this show we get a lot of great uh talent out of this show and i thought there were some definitely some very strong performances but one of the best for sure comes from essentially the main character, even though the show doesn't really have a main character, and that's from Bernardo Velasco, who plays this character, Ronaldo. I thought he was fantastic here. This is someone who, you know, he has a deep passion for horror and things like that, and he really kind of wants to make a career out of it, and Velasco does a really great job just showing Ronaldo's admiration for horror, how much he gets out of watching it and what it really means to him, but also him being a bit conflicted, and I think his performance here was definitely very strong. He is a lot of fun to watch. He is definitely the most caring out of all of them. He really does look after all of his friends very well, and I really did love what he did here. I think he gave a very strong performance here for sure. However, for me, maybe the standout of this entire series has to be Ana Fabrega as the character of Tati. She, I thought, was hilarious. In terms of, like, Kami, easily the standout in that department. She is such a just weird and quirky character. Her outlook on life and things like that. Tati is someone who isn't afraid to be really weird and out there. She has a lot of weird hopes and dreams and things like that. And she's just so fun to watch. Fabrega really, you could tell, got into this character, just the eccentricities of her, and I really love what she brought to this role. Again, another comedian that I'm not that familiar with, but one I'll definitely be on the lookout for sure, because I thought she just knocked it out of the park here, and maybe, like I said, gave the best performance out of everyone. And then the rest of the cast, I think, also does a really strong job. Julio Torres is very good as a character, Andreas, who really has a, the most going on dramatically, and I think he definitely stood out here. Uh, I really liked uh, Cassandra uh, Singer Heredi as Ursula. I thought she was definitely very strong. Fred Armisen, I mean, as usual, he's always very good, and he definitely does do a strong job here. Carol Kane pops up as well, and she's very good. Really, everyone, in terms of acting, does a really strong job here. Also, I forgot to say this while filming this review, but the four main cast members have fantastic chemistry. They all work so well together. They balance off each other quite well, especially the different personalities they all have. It's probably some of the best chemistry I've seen from any, um, you know, actors all year. Definitely one of the best ensembles in here for sure. Everyone really does do an incredible job. But now let's get to the directing and the writing here, which the directing in this show I thought was definitely very strong for sure. The show never really takes itself all this seriously, and the world building itself, this is a very strange and out there world, and I definitely really did appreciate it, and it got a lot of laughs out of me. There's a lot of great horror nods and things like that. The show will reference a lot of horror things where if you really love horror films, I can definitely see you really loving the show because you'll be able to pick out a lot of references but then they'll do some really weird things as well and i think that that was definitely very well done but 
the show always still stays somewhat grounded at points as well. These characters, they do have stuff going on, and there is definitely a good amount of drama there, but it's never at the forefront. This is definitely way more of a comedy than a dramedy, and that's not something I see for a lot of, um, you know, HBO shows these days. Usually they're kind of a hybrid, but this show definitely leans much more on the comedy side of things, and I, I was perfectly fine with that, because I thought it was definitely very fun for sure, and I really really did love the comedy here. So yeah, I thought the directing was definitely very well done, but the writing is also what really does stick out to me, because on the surface, this is a very basic plot. You have four people who are horror enthusiasts, and they're trying to put together, you know, these specific, um, you know, the, these specific sort of gigs, and they're trying to do what they can to become sort of big, but that does provide for a lot of stuff. It provides for a lot of humor, but it also does provide on some really great um, social commentary, I think, on how hard it is to make your own sort of business. I mean, there's a lot that really does go into it, money issues and things like that, and that's something I really like that the show did tackle. The character of Ursula, for example, this is someone who has to work at this day job of, um, being this this nurse and she she absolutely hates it she's very much discriminated against by her boss who really doesn't take her very seriously and things like that and she isn't doing what she you know she's also not doing what she's supposed to be doing either so it becomes sort of a challenge for her but she also is someone who because that is very dedicated to Los of spooky she's trying to do what she can to you know make you know get the funds for it and things like that and i thought stuff like that was definitely very well done and did a very good job of of just showing just how tough it can be for something like this to be pulled off, and I really did appreciate that for sure. And the characters themselves are also very well written, especially, like I said, when it comes to Ronaldo. I mean, this isn't just someone who wants to make this a business. He wants to become a writer in horror and things like that. And this really does complicate things, because while he is working in this business, there's always that side of him that is tempted to do something outside of this. And you can see that there's that causes a lot of friction between these friends. And I definitely really did like seeing that. Or Andreas, someone who is engaged to this man that he clearly doesn't really love all that much, but that his family is kind of forcing him to marry in order for him to keep his inheritance and things like that. And, uh, you know, basically because of that, uh, he, you know, he has, this boyfriend is very unsupportive of what he's doing, and he has to do, try to make a decision there. So again, they give you enough stuff with these characters, and even characters like Tati, who, again, are pretty much just ridiculous, still do have quite a lot of development there. We get a good idea of what, what Tati's wants and needs are, and that's something that really did impress me with the show, is that they have just enough character development there for the first season. These are things that I'm sure are going to be expanded upon in other seasons for sure, but here, the se this season is, is really focused on the comedy, and let me tell you, it hits very, very hard. There are so many hilarious scenes in this show. I mean, there is literally an episode. I'm not going to spoil really too much of what happens, but a character gets trapped in something, and this happens for like an episode and again it's one of those things where it just shows just how fantastical things really are and I think they did an excellent job with that um, there are tons of things going on with Tati's character as well, certain situations she gets herself in that I thought were hilarious, or even this woman they stumble upon who could potentially help them, and she's like this horror enthusiast, um, just hilarious to watch, I mean, stuff like that, this show just pulls off so well, there are so many great gags within the show, I was laughing consistently, and it's a very entertaining show in that regard, and like I said, that balance there, it's a tough one to do, but this show, again, it balances it in a way where it makes sure it always puts the comedy before the drama. And I think that was definitely the right choice because some of the stuff in the show is just so ridiculous and hard to take seriously. So they don't take it all that seriously. Like the character of Andreas, he does not know a lot about his, um, you know, his family, where he comes from and things like that. So he's visited by quite literally this like fairy sort of creature and he has to do all of these ridiculous things for her, and the show never once takes itself seriously with that, and 
I think that was definitely a very smart thing to do for sure. They're just the show understands there are certain things that you we're, we as an audience are not going to take seriously, so it doesn't make us do that. And I thought they definitely did a very good job with that here for sure. So I, I really did appreciate the writing here. Really, my only flaw though with the writing um, involves there was one character that I have not mentioned. That's the character of Tico, played by Fred Armisen, which, like I said. Most of the season is very well written. I love the four friends. I think they work very well together. But there is a subplot going on this entire season, and that involves uh, Fred Armisen's character, Tico, who, as I said, I really did like Armisen in the show, but whenever they would cut back to him, I just didn't really find myself all that interested. There's like this sort of mis mistaken identity storyline that he has going on, and where it ends up taking him is not particularly interesting. They don't really ever dive all that deep into it, and it felt like it was only here for two reasons. One, so it could prepare the character of Ronaldo further because he does eventually um, become involved with this. Two, because Fred Armisen was so heavily involved with the show, they wanted to give him a character, and I just don't think it really needed to be here. It just didn't really fit in the grand scheme of things, and they don't really bring it up a lot either. So I just did not really think this character was all that well written. They didn't seem to have a good idea of what they wanted to do with him. And any time they would cut back, once Carol Kane gets involved, that's when I thought he got a lot better. But the first three episodes, any time they cut back to him, it was a little rough because I, I rarely cared about what was going on there. So that's really my only flaw in terms of the writing. But other than that, I think it's very well written. I think it's a very clever show. It's got some great characters. Characters, and I, I really did appreciate the writing here and the style of the show as well just the look and feel of it It has a very specific one. It's very out there It's very eccentric and I really did appreciate the cinematography here, especially the scenes involving these guys Putting on their own horror show. I mean you really do feel like you're watching a horror movie It's very detailed in that way And I think they did a really great job with that in terms of the visuals here I was overall very impressed with how that was done the score here. I definitely really did enjoy for sure and the editing I thought was also um, very well done I definitely really did appreciate um, the editing here I think the show for the most part was very well paced however I do feel that they could have done a better job with um, fleshing out some of the storylines. Six episodes, some things did, it did cause some things to feel just a little bit rushed. But like I said, they give just enough character development to these guys for the first season. But if they would have sprinkled in just two more episodes, I think some of these arcs would have felt a little bit more satisfying. Because just to me, I felt like some of them just felt a bit rushed, particularly where they end up going with Ronaldo. It feels very rushed in that sense. Even though I do like where he ends up going, it just felt a little bit rushed to me. But other than that, I really enjoyed the show. I had a very good time with it. It's very out there. It's very weird. It's definitely not going to be for everyone, but it's very well acted. The four main friends have very good chemistry. Um, I really did like all the characters and where they end up going. The show knows when to take itself seriously and when not to, and I think they strike that balance pretty well. It's definitely highly unpredictable as well. Where the show ended up going was not really where I expected it to, and I think they did some really good stuff there. And overall, I just had a really great time with this one. I don't really see a lot of people talking about it, and I really wish that they would, because similar to Vita last year, I feel like this is going to be maybe the sleeper hit of the summer season. I could definitely see that being the case here. So with all that said, I am going to give the first season of Los Spookies a B+. Plus. But overall, guys, in my review of the first season of Los Spookies, let me know what you guys saw of the season overall, left your thoughts on it. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys in my next video, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.